So before I start, I'd just like to tell you a little bit about myself. I've been employed at the University of Tasmania for approximately 30 years. Of that time, um, the, the first uh, uh, 10 years was in, or I graduated from uh, a Bachelor of Business with him from the University of Tasmania. I then spent 10 years in industry before coming back to academia. And um, so I've been working within the School of Accounting for approximately 20 years of my time at the university. I've work, worked in a number of um, senior leadership roles in the school and approximately three weeks ago I actually stepped into the head of school role. So I'm only new into this role but I have a vision for this school, for the School of Accounting, Economics and Finance and my vision is for this school to become a leader um, both in research and teaching so that we'll be able to bring change to our community within Tasmania, within Australia, Australia and globally. And how am I going to do that? or how we're going to do that as a teaching team. Uh, I want to ensure that our, our teaching is quality, that it is world class, and that it focuses not just within the classroom, but it focuses outside, that it gives you the best experience, that it gives you the experience, so it gives you not just the classroom experience, but it gives you a real world experience by us bringing people into the classroom, showing you what um, the an accounting or economics or finance is really about from a real world perspective. But I also want to ensure through this process that your student experience is the best it possibly can be. Because my focus is on ensuring that um, your th this experience at the University of Tasmania is, um, is the highest level it can be. And, and your wellbeing and your health and your safety is of utmost concern to me. So that's my vision in a very short snapshot. So I might just move on to the next slide. So just to give you a little bit about our school. So the Tasmanian School of Business and Economics, we've got four separate academic discipline areas, which include accounting, economics and finance, which I'm the head of school of. And then we've got management and marketing and one teaching institute, being the Australian Institute of Health Services Management. We're actually Australia's fourth oldest university. We have a number of campuses. And that includes Hobart, Launceston and Burnie, a campus in Sydney. We also teach programs in Hong Kong and Shanghai. Now, university is ranked in the top 2% of universities globally and in the top 350 universities in the world by all major ranking systems. Now, before I go on, I just wanted to state, if you've got any questions as I work through these slides, um, if you can just place them from what I understand in the chat, and then at the end of this presentation, we will be focusing on them. And this presentation will go for approximately 30, 40 minutes and then we'll wrap it up when, and uh, we'll answer some of your questions. So I just wanted to state that. Okay, so why should you study business at University of Tasmania? Well, we have really strong graduate employment outcomes. 76, uh, we have a 76% employment rate with an average uh, salary for our undergrad students of $55,000 and a 90% employment rate and an average of $100,000 sal salary for our postgrad students. We're the only business school in Tasmania and uh, we have a strong broad network with government and businesses across the state. We're very well connected to businesses. Um, and as, as I stated before, as part of my vision, what I, what I want to do is to continue that network, continue bringing those businesses into the classroom and taking the students out into real world experience. As part of that, we pro provide a wide range of corporate internships and work integrated learning opportunities. Uh, and Clive, who will be talking later in this session uh, on his experience, will actually be talking, I think, I might be wrong, but I think on uh, some of his work integrated 
learning opportunities within the tax clinic within the university. Well, now currently we're in the process of seeking AACSB accreditation and once um, that is gained, we'll be in the top 5% of, of business schools within the world. And we expect that accreditation um, later this year. We have high quality and accessible academics. Uh, our academics engage, are engaged closely with the profession. Many of them um, uh, have, uh, they are closely connected to the profession. Um, we have, we're accredited with um, CPA, uh, CA and IPA. And we work closely with them in the state and at a national level. A number of our academics sit on national boards with, um, within the accounting profession. We have an ideal study environment that's health, healthy, safe, uncrowded, and there are fewer negative distractions. And we have a welcoming and culturally diverse international environment in state-of-the-art new teaching facilities, um, specifically in Hobart, but we also have very contemporary facilities within Launceston. I'm actually based in Launceston, as is Clive, and um, we'll be talking, um, and as I mentioned, Clive will be talking about his experiences shortly. So research strengths in accounting, economics and finance. I want to specifically talk about um, my research strengths. So I'm, I'm an accountant, uh, as mentioned, 30 years in the industry, 20 of those within academia. Uh, I have a strong research focus on social and environmental accounting. Our school has a strong focus um, across accounting, economics and finance on environmental accounting, economics and finance. Um, we actually have just recently employed the leading Australian academic um, in accounting and his focus is on sustainability and environmental accounting. It's Professor Craig Deegan and he commenced with us in February of this year. So our, our accounting sits uh, across um, a number of our staff sit within social and environmental accounting. Um, we also have in economics, resource economics and energy market research. We also, some of our economic researchers uh, are leading at an international level in their research. Uh, and in finance, we're focused on oil price shocks, the global financial crisis and empirical finance research. So our courses in accounting, economics and finance. We have a number of uh, different courses and some of, and this just provides a brief overview, but as we work through these slides, we'll break it down and we'll talk about each course. So we have the Bachelor of Business degree with a number of majors that sit within that Bachelor of Business. That's a three year degree. We also have the Bachelor of Business Accelerated degree. Now that is based um, in Launceston and it's also um, from uh, Accelerated Study Period 2, which commences later this month, it's actually going online too. It's a two year degree, it's an accelerated degree that we commenced last year. We have the Bachelor of Economics, uh, being a, a three year degree, but we also have combined degrees. So, and combined degrees are an excellent way to combine your interests and customise your education. So some examples where we combine, where we can combine degrees are Bachelor of Business with the Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Business and the Bachelor of Economics. Bachelor of Business and the Bachelor of Information and Communications Technology. Bachelor of Business and the Bachelor of Law. Um, so there's a number of different ways you can combine them. And with the combined degrees, it's usually only just only one more year and you, and you can get that combined degree apart from the Bachelor, um, the combined degree of Bachelor of Business and 
business, uh, the Bachelor of Law, which takes an additional year. The Graduate Certificate in Business Studies is a pathway for students uh, for admission into a number of the postgraduate courses for students that may not have underta undertaken postgrad postgraduate coursework before. So four units sitting within the Graduate Certificate in Business Studies. We also have the Masters of Professional Accounting. Um, so that's a postgraduate degree for students who may not have con um, not have an accounting background or who need upskilling to meet professional accounting requirements. It's a two year full time degree with a number of specialisations that sit around that and I'll be talking about that in a few minutes. We have the Master of Finance specialisation, uh, which is a two year degree in Hobart. And it instills in students uh, uh, specific financial um, knowledge in the broader financial, uh, broader financial area. We have honours degrees, which are a one year degree, um, which provides and which covers four core units with a thesis. And it, by completing an honours degree, it provides an edge over other students that graduate with a standard Bachelor of Business. So it gives you that edge in seeking employment. It also opens up opportunities if you complete an honours degree into the research higher degree space. So that's, for example, PhD or a Masters by Research. And then for high achieving students, we also have research higher degree scholarships that are available within the PhD, being a three year full time scholarship. So there are a number of courses that are available within accounting, economics and finance. And I'm going to talk through each of these now. So the Bachelor of Business. So it's designed to produce graduates with well developed business knowledge and a mix of skills and abilities that are highly sought after by employers. The, our business graduates have highly transferable skills and they can work in any industry, public or private sector. It's a fantastic generalised course that lead you to many career options and open up many doors for you. So specifically, there's a number of different majors within the Bachelor of Business course. You can study accounting. That's available on all campuses. So people with um, accounting degrees are high, highly sought after in a range of sectors in the ever changing business and corporate world. And this course is recognised by professional bodies, including CPA Australia, Chartered Accountants Australia in New Zealand and the Institute of Public Accountants. And a number, as I've mentioned, a number of our staff sit or are, high, are connected to these professional bodies. I sit on one of the uh, CPA boards uh, and a number of other staff sit on both local um, and national um, professional body boards. So we're strongly connected to the profession. You can also major in business economics, which is available on the Hobart campus only. Now, UTAS has been teaching economics for over 100 years and we've produced some of the leading, um, Australia's leading experts in this field. You can also major in marketing, available Hobart um, and in Launceston in the accelerated degree. Finance, it's available in Hobart or on an online basis and careers in finance um, suit analytical, inquisitive thinkers who want to work closely with the decision makers in an organisation. And in this degree, you'll develop a strong understanding of banking and financial institutions as you learn about financial planning and management, investment analysis and corporate and international finance. Um, other majors you can focus on include management, which is available in Hobart and Launceston, 
and some units are offered online. Uh, you can develop your leadership skills and learn how to understand how um, people behave in organisations. And then we have the human resource management major, which is available in Hobart or online and focuses on the human resource side of organisations. Now, as part of the Bachelor of Business, students can undertake a corporate internship as part of their degree, which is a great way to connect in with business, um, to connect in with the real world, world and to learn and, or uh, to experience um, and to connect in with that business and to learn some hands-on practical experience. And a number of our students in completing the corporate internship from this corporate internship, it has led to uh, employment opportunities. Now, international students can study the Bachelor of Business in Hobart or Launceston. So I want to talk about the Bachelor of Business, um, the accelerated program, which is the two-year accelerated program delivered in the Launceston CBD. Um, so it's right in the middle of Launceston, which is in the north of the state. As I mentioned, I'm based in Launceston, so is Clive, who will talk later. Um, and this degree, it's commenced last year, and it's highly innovative in that it's a two-year accelerated program. So instead of three years, you can be out the door in two years. We've actually worked really closely in developing industry links through the Chamber of Commerce to develop this program so that there's quite a lot of interaction with industry by being based within the central business district. Um, what we have, what we find um, or what we, we do, we organise regular catch-ups with uh, different businesses that come in and they present um, seminars and so it's, it's quite closely connected with industry. Now this course, this accelerated model is only available in Launceston. The next intake for international students is actually later this month um, in late May and we're moving whilst uh, we started last year face to face, we're moving to an online environment and, and as we all know we're, we're um, we are in an online environment now, um, but the actual study uh, is moving to a more permanent perspective too. From So we'll have face-to-face, -face, but we'll also have line available going forward. There'll also be another intake in September and then in early February. And that course, as I stated, is accelerated, so you'll finish your degree in two years. And it's also suitable for students who have diploma qualifications who wish to top up their education. So the Bachelor of Economics. So UTAS uh, has very strong academics in this area with a Bachelor of Business, uh, sorry, a Bachelor of Economics. From UTAS, you'll be able to stand out in the labour market with a detailed understanding of how businesses are made by individuals, firms and governments through analysis of micro and macro economic environments for business and the broader community. Majors are available in economic analysis, economic foundations, environmental and resource economics and finance. So there's a lot of opportunity available within the Bachelor of Economics. And it's an excellent degree to combine with uh, humanities, being arts, business, science or law. So it's a great way to combine. And who are we looking for with um, Bachelor of Economics? What types of students? Students that, have a, that are strong in their maths and statistics and want to be able to apply these skills or students that want to work on projects as part of teams and students who want to develop their communication skills. Now, economists are currently uh, on Australia's medium and long-term strategic skills list with vacancies in local, state and Commonwealth government agencies, as well as a range of consulting firms. So we need these skills. So if you're interested in this 
uh, if you're interested in maths in statistics really consider the Bachelor of Economics we have state-of-the-art teaching facilities which I, I'm pretty sure I'll be talking about in a few slides where we where um, uh, I provide some details about our Bloomberg lab um, which provides real-time financial uh, data um, so it's an exciting um, opportunity being the Bachelor of Economics for those students that have those strong skills. So the Graduate Certificate in Business Studies is a qualifying pathway into post-grad study. And it's ideal for students with professional experience who do not have an undergraduate degree. You study four core units in accounting, corporate sustainability, management and marketing. And it can be packaged with an 18 month master program such as the Master of uh, Marketing Management. Now, speaking specifically the four core units accounting and corporate sustainability um, these units are leading and I know that because I've been working very closely with the unit coordinators only this semester the corporate sustainability that unit is um, unit coordinated by Professor Craig Deegan who as I mentioned has only just come in to who has only just commenced employment with the University of Tasmania in our college um, but he's the leading academic in accounting um, in across Australia and he his research is in sustainability so it's pretty exciting the Master of Professional Accounting spe Specialisation as I stated previously, it's aimed at people who don't have experience in accounting or those who need to increase their skills to meet the professional accounting requirements. So in addition to the 12 core accounting units, students can choose from specialisations in business management, advanced accounting and marketing. Now Clive will discuss his own study experience later in the, this presentation because he's actually a master a master of professional accounting student um, on the Launceston campus. So the Master of Finance by specialisation the emphasis is placed on providing internationally applicable principles of finance and on the use of financial instruments as tools for risk management across a wide variety of situations. Specialisations um, include business research, data management and environmental management. And we also have a business research option which provides a high, for high achieving students in with a pathway into a high degree by research into the PhD area. The Bloomberg Lab, very few business schools have this resource but we do at the University of Tasmania. We have 10 Bloomberg terminals that bring together real life global financial market data and analytics and all TSB staff and students can access this resource. Uh, it's used formally in a number of units at an undergrad and postgrad level. So this resource enables our students to develop globally relevant skills in market and company analytics, economic evaluation and portfolio performance and risk. To just touch briefly on the corporate internship program. This is one area that really makes our courses stand out and make them distinctive. 
So that's where our students undertake formal placements within organisations. So internships provide students the opportunity to directly apply theoretical learning in a practical and real world environment. So the program's a credit bearing unit of study for undergraduate and postgraduate students studying within um, the Tasmanian School of Business and Economics. There are no additional costs for completing this program, uh, but students need to have a credit average and be in their second or their third year of study. And um, we have over 200 internship partners uh, that we link into regularly to um, provide these corporate internship opportunities. So it's a, it's a very exciting area and it provides that real world experience. And as I mentioned, through this corporate internship program, it does provide um, employment opportunities. Um, we, we hear regularly of this um, employment opportunities following from this corporate internship program. So that is one way to get um, to open up the door. Here's an example um, of a internship program where we had Island Berries. Island Berries is a well-known Tasmanian company, um, produces a number of different types of uh, jams and sauces and so on. Um, students were asked in this particular corporate internship um, opportunity, students went out and they were asked to organise a system of product costs and expenditure to assist in calculating the final cost and profit mar margin for a range of products for island berries. Students considered labour, raw materials, variable and fixed input costs, unit of production and profit margin to help deliver the best pricing strategy. They are required to create and use Excel and MYOB, which is an accounting package software. Now that accounting, softy, is, um, accounting software package is used uh, throughout our accounting degree, but to actually use it in a real world experience, to actually go out into an um, internship and to have that opportunity to use it in real world, it actually just opened up, um, it actually showed the students that it's just not all classroom, that, that we actually, in the real world, people do use these um, different types of software. So going out into the real world, it provides that experience for students. There were three particular students in this case, they worked one day per week for a full semester and two of the students were studying the Masters of Professional Accounting and one um, the Master of Finance. So it provided that real world opportunity for them. Now, as I mentioned, uh, Clive uh, is an MPA student with a background in hospitality management. He's a CPA ambassador and he has completed a corporate internship in our tax clinic within the university. Um, number of interests, as you can see there, but I'm just going to pass it over to Clive now. Clive, if you would like to introduce yourself and say a few words. Very much, Belinda. So, as you heard, my name is uh, Clive Zuse. I began my journey with the University of Tasmania last year in March. So, I started in March 2019 and currently I'm in my third year with the school, my <coughs> third semester, sorry. So, so far I, I've been, uh, I'll be talking uh, through some various different uh, points that I have at the moment, and then I'll um, I'll be just going through that list. So, with that, why I chose um, MPA S is just because that I saw at first I didn't have that background in accounting, as Belinda mentioned. My background is in hospitality, so I wanted something that would give me a competitive edge within the markets per se in hospitality and also within the accounting field. And I saw that this program is something that would give me that opportunity to actually step, have a stepping stone uh, to, to grow within the accounting field. And why then with the specialization, I'm more uh, 
balance to go with the advanced accounting. Why I chose the advanced accounting is just because with the subjects that were particularly chosen for that, things like risk management, things like uh, marketing, um, cost accounting, these would give me a better edge within analyzing my data or analyzing business. And that's one thing that I thought would be a benefit for me. Um, so far, so good. I've been enjoying my course. I've been learning quite a lot. And um, I then also thought while I was here, I saw different opportunities coming through. Things like the tax clinic, things like the CPA, being a CPA student ambassador. And I saw them, not only me just getting that education, I also saw it as a stepping stone to actually start getting myself into the industry. And by getting into the industry, I mean, with the CPA, what they're giving me currently is uh, a vast network uh, place where I can meet different people, different organizations, different business people that can actually help me with my career, that can help me with jobs, that can help me with just even general advice within the field already them in CPA, they can give me that career guidance as well, and as well some employability skills. And also going to the tax clinic internship that I did, I'm also going to be doing it again next semester for my final. So with the first time when I did it last year, it gave me that, because we were actually learning it, it gave me that practical understanding of me um, of understanding how the tax actually works. Sometimes when you're just hearing it from the teacher, sometimes when you're just doing uh, exams, you don't really see the practicality of it. But when, then when I went to actually see meeting different clients, meeting different people saying, I've got this problem, and you would actually say, ah, oh, this is what I've learned. This is how we actually solve the problem. It gave me that opportunity to actually then vast and understand and I believe this could actually be one stepping stone as well for myself within the future to, if I say I want to open myself, uh, become a tax agent, though, yes, I know I need to study maybe one or two other courses or for me to be a tax agent can be, I already know how to run one. And also if then I go to a firm that needs tax advice, that needs um, different uh, circumstances within the organization that I'm working. I believe I can then help with that. So I've also, though this is um, recently, I've also joined what we call the BEST uh, Society, which is a business and economics uh, student society that the school has. Um, this is, I joined it after I actually became a student ambassador so that because they work together hand in hand, uh, so we had to actually then be part of the team and that they also saw a different uh, networking place where I'm actually meeting different people from the bachelor side of things, the marketing people, finance people, economics, and we're just now one big family, not just accountants. And we're actually just that one big family that will bring us as a society to know and understand each other, where we need to help each other, the people for marketing, people for finance, people for um, other different fields, we can then be talking different ideas, sharing uh, different news. And this uh, is another opportunity that I saw that the school is providing for us as students to actually then uh, advance in ourselves. Um, a bit about the environment that I'm learning, which is Launceston, as Belinda had said, that's where I'm based. Um, Launceston, uh, at first I didn't really know when I came, I didn't really know what Launceston was and why I ended up here being here because my course, as I said, Advanced Accounting, is only being offered here in Launceston. And um, Launceston, what I've actually discovered within it, it's, it's, a, it's a city which is really good, uh, which gives you that environment to actually study. Uh, there are some places where it's always fast paced, but this place where you actually 
it does have its own pace, which is a bit fast, but not as fast as some places, that you can then um, learn, you can then digest, you can then understand the, 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 the things that are happening around you. Sometimes if you don't have that conducive environment, it's hard for you to actually then uh, fulfill your dreams or fulfill that uh, learning outcome that you really desire. And uh, another thing is that the teachers, uh, the, the, the supporting staff, the people around I stay on campus, the accommodations that they provide, they're actually conducive for us to actually learn. And I think I did actually make a good choice. Some people were saying, oh, why are you going to Lancet and why are you doing this? But for me, out of the campuses that I've heard and from the experience that I heard, I think I actually made a, a good choice coming here to Launceston. Uh, this as well then incorporates, um, it also blends in with my kind of interest that I have with my life. Um, particularly some of the things that I was talking like the tax clinic, some of the things like the CPA, uh, I'm also an uh, expiring entrepreneur. And with that, I mean, being an entrepreneur, I'm, I'm thinking of actually then starting up my own business one day. And having all this environment, having this all um, experience that I'm getting, I'm seeing that I'm even actually getting also that um, push, that uh, experience that I can even bring my business here within Launceston itself. I like to travel, uh, of which Tasmania, Launceston is pretty much in the center of everywhere. I can just go around Bern, Hobart, um, well, of which is just two hours away. And I believe I can, if I want to go into, uh, into the mainland, it's actually another great place because we have an airport here. Uh, I also love cricket, rugby, and just volunteering around the community of which there is what we call the green market where people come and buy every Saturday people come and buy uh, vegetables so that's some another place where I can go there and volunteer for myself and just get myself known and uh, enjoy everything um, I think that's pretty much what I had planned for you today and I'll hand it back over to Belinda thanks thank you Clive It was very informative and uh, gave a really good wrap up of uh, your current studies. Thank you so much. Oops. So just moving on to questions, as I mentioned at the beginning of the session, if you have any questions, if you can put them through the chat function as we move through, as as you're moving, as we're moving through this presentation. So we're very happy, um, the three of us, to answer any questions you may have. And, and if we can't answer them at this particular moment, we're very happy to follow up with um, any answers later on after this session. Hi, Belinda. Yes, we've got some great questions coming through. We'll just start feeding them through by the chat. So I'll send the first okay. question through very soon. No worries. So Trang asks, can students study two majors in business? Example, accounting and human resource management. Sorry, I'm... Uh, yes, you can, yes, you can. Um, there's uh, 24 units in a degree. Um, so uh, eight units uh, represent the major. So we have eight core units within a Bachelor of Business and then we have eight for the um, for the major and so that allows for two majors to be completed because eight plus eight plus eight is the 24.
Are there any GPA requirements for taking the internship? Julie, I might just flick that question to you. Sure, thank you. Yes, the corporate internship program is a full unit of academic study. In fact, there's a lot, a lot of flexibility. Students can choose to do one unit of 12.5%. They can do, choose to do two units. So they might want to do one um, internship in accounting and perhaps a second one in marketing, or they can choose to do a more substantial one, which is weighted at 25%. Um, generally speaking, each internship requires the student to commit to one day a week of full-time study with that internship partner. So it is a fully, uh, it is a full academic unit of study where the student gets a whole lot of real world experience. And then Ray asks, uh, I'd like to ask how long is the work integrated learning program in total? Is the program just one semester or one year or more? And also how many additional hours must students commit on top of their studies to be part of the work integrated program? So um, I'm gathering here, Ray, you're talking about the co corporate internship unit, which is one unit. Um, Julie, I can see is busting to answer this question. So I'm happy to flick it over to you, Julie. Thanks, Belinda. We get a lot of students who want to do internship units, and I would strongly recommend that any student um, take up this opportunity if they really want to get ahead in the workforce. We know that students who do the corporate internship program are more likely to get jobs sooner and also to get better jobs because they have local relevant industry experience. Um, each internship is equivalent to the time and effort for a unit of study. So as I mentioned um, a few minutes ago, a typical internship unit is one day per week for an entire semester. Um, sometimes we also offer internships over the spring or summer study period to give students an opportunity to do, to do them in intensive mode. Um, most of the internships are in Tasmania, in Hobart, Launceston, but we also do occasionally have some um, further afield. Fantastic opportunity, so I would strongly recommend anyone take them up. You do need to be in your final semester of study, sorry, final year of study. Hi, Belinda, we've got another good question sitting in the chat there. It's actually quite a common question around uh, our July intake. So it'd be probably good for everyone to yeah, hear the response from the university. Maybe Julie could give an answer to this. Um, I'll actually, I'll read it out myself. Um, Julie, so this is the, the burning question. Do we have a July 2020 intake for the students or will it be online for now? We're expecting that students who come and start an on-campus mode will commence their studies studying online. So they will be on-campus students, although the initial um, part of their studies will be delivered by um, online study. Is that the question that was being asked? I, I'm, I've just, I've scrolled down and I can see the question. Do we have a July 2020 intake for the students or will yeah, it be that's the online? One. Yep. Yeah, so that's the one. That's an absolute yes. Yeah. So well, I've got a lot more questions coming through, so I'll, I'll keep feeding those through. And for students who are really keen to come and get started, we have an intake of the Accelerated Bachelor of Business that starts in just under three weeks. Mm -hmm. That will be fantastic. The offering up there is brilliant. Belinda's worked really clo closely with local industry, the Chamber of Commerce. There's a lot of applied learning, a lot of industry connections. Um, and I think that having that extra year off your space to go out and start working is a really good opportunity. It saves a lot of money as well. Absolutely. So the the so, um, the accelerated study period starts the 25th of May, so which is not far away. So if you're interested, great opportunity. Linda, I have a question that I think some of the students might be interested in. Could you explain a bit more about what a social or environmental accounting student might go on and do in the workforce? 
Yes, that's, that's a very good question. So the social and environmental um, aspect, I think I, I, perhaps I'll give you a bit of my background um, too, because I, I was uh, a, can you hear me? Right, just getting a bit of interference here, but if uh, if it's not coming through, that's fine. I'll just continue as is with the interference at my end. Um, I commenced um, as a tax accountant at KPMG Accountants. So I, I started there. That was my graduate accounting position. Julie, I might just pass back to you. Sure, we can actually hear you fine. Okay, okay. The sound's now gone. It was quite loud. Um, yes, so I started at KPMG Accountants as a tax accountant where I was very, very focused on um, tax accounting, the numbers, um, and that was my focus. Coming into academia and starting to explore through my Masters of Research and then my PhD, which focused on sustainability reporting. It made me realise that as accountants, um, we should be looking beyond just financial reporting. We should be looking at, at other aspects, whether that includes social reporting or environmental reporting. And you'll see in annual reports, um, if, if you pick up an annual report, these days, it's far more than just the numbers. At the back of the report is the numbers, is the uh, standard profit and loss balance sheet cash flow statement. But at the front of the report, it tells a different story. It tells about the people of the organisation. It tells about how the um, organisation is impacting on the environment and helping the environment. And this is where a social and environmental accountant looks so much further than just the numbers. It's looking beyond the, the um, impact of the numbers in the balance sheet and the profit and loss. It's looking at the broader um, impacts of the organisation. How does it impact socially within um, the wider community? How, how does um, the organisation impact uh, from an environmental perspective? And I think what I've seen over my 30 year career is that the tax accountants and, or financial accountants are starting to embrace social and environmental accounting. They're starting to realise that um, whilst, yes, no, numbers are so important, they can make or break an organisation, the actual social impacts of an organisation and the environmental impacts are just as important. And, and we as accountants need to consider all three. Uh, and that is where the future of accounting is going. It's moving beyond just the numbers. It's looking at the social and environmental impacts. And that, and as I mentioned, from a research perspective, um, our school is um, quite focused on social and environmental accounting. And that basically means we look beyond the numbers. Numbers are critical, absolutely, but we also need to take into account the social and environmental impacts um, of the organisation. And, and this is where accounting is going because accountants need to be broader than just numbers. So absolutely the numbers, but we also need to be focused on the social and environmental impacts. Linda, we've got a few other questions there. Um, now, a lot of people are asking uh, about, we've got the July intake, is there another intake after July that students can apply for? We also have the ASP3 intake in September for the Bachelor of Business. Yep. That's based Thanks, in Launceston. And I've got another good question here from Rachel, and she's just asking in a short sentence, what is the main difference between the Bachelor of Business or the Bachelor of Economics, and why should a student choose one over the other? That's a very good question. 
the Bachelor of Business is very is focused quite broadly at on at uh, business at a broad level, and then you can choose your major, whether that's accounting, whether it's economics, and in that major you complete eight units, and whether it be management, marketing, where economics, the Bachelor of Economics, is solely focused from an economics perspective. So you have 24 units that cover economics. Okay, so, so the Bachelor of Business is more broad where you can specialise into majors, um, where the economics um, degree is very focused and, and is very numbers driven. And as we mentioned previously, um, is um, if, if, you're, if you've got those particular skills from an economics perspective, if you're driven by the numbers, that is the degree for you. There's, there's, a, there's a shortage of economists at the moment. Um, so, but we're very happy to discuss the differences between the two. Uh, we'd have student advisors that would be available to help you to work through these differences. I've got another good question here. Um, it's just regarding what is the process for online class registration for students who will not be able to travel for the July intake? So that might be a question for Julie. I'm not sure if I understand the question correctly, but students will register for tutorials as they normally would. They will be doing those tutorials online and they'll be doing the lectures online as well, even though they're admitted to the course as an on-campus student. Thanks, Julie. And this is probably another good question for Julie. So um, now I believe TSB has got a, uh, a, their own WeChat account that they run. Could you tell us a little bit about that to help with the student support? Absolutely. We have a number of Chinese students and we launched our, cl our cloud classes this year. Cloud classes are online study support offered and delivered in Mandarin for Chinese speaking students. We have dedicated tutors for each of the schools in our business college who can help students um, manage their studies, especially for those students who are back in China or not um, studying on, on campus or in Hobart or, or Launceston. Um, we also have dedicated um, academic topics. So for example, last week there was a session on how to do Harvard referencing. Um, the week prior, we did a session on how to understand what the tutors or lecturers are asking for in assignments. So we are trying really hard to support our international students by offering additional online learning activities and support. We're also doing something similar for Hong Kong students. Um, we have a group of Hong Kong students who are being supported on WhatsApp, and we're very open to any other student suggestions. Um, I will also say that our Dean is very keen to speak to any students. Um, he's offered to have um, group chats with students from certain countries, and he also has a dedicated inbox to deal with any student concerns. So we're really genuinely concerned about our students' wellbeing and welfare, and we really encourage them to reach out to us and to help us help them. Thanks, Julie. Now I'll send a, a question through the chat function. I might get Belinda to read this one out because um, she's across the the terminology this, a bit better than I am. Is this the one for Clive? This is for Clive, so yeah. we'll okay, put so Clive off the mute. Clive, and... <laughs> Clive um, if MPAS uh, CPA specialised students want to become CPA members, what do they yes. need to do after completion? I think that's the way the question question reads. Okay, so to become, um, at the moment, being a student ambassador, I'm already a CPA member, uh, being an associate member. And what that means is that I'm just a member that uh, is there to be given uh, different programs that they have within the CPA. And as you can go, if you're a student, you can come here, we can then make you, uh, help you join and become a member within the, uh, at the school. And then once you have finished and completed your, your study, and if you want to then become a full uh, member of the CPA, uh, then you can 
because you're already an, a member already as an associate, but when you then uh, finish the school, uh, they will actually then make you a full member that has the full rights of everything within their organization. So it's just you just moving from one uh, membership to another, of which is going to be the same thing. We also do have the CPA specialisation based in Hobart um, as part of the MPAS um, where, where students can undertake the CPA units um, and undertake the CPA exams uh, as part of that process. Thank you. Um, we've had quite a few questions coming through regarding scholarships. Um, Julie, you probably best answer this. What scholarships uh, does the School of Business offer moving forward into the remainder of 2020 and 2021? So for the remainder of 2020, we are continuing with our Dean of Tisby Merit Scholarship. Um, this is automatically assessed and is for very high achieving students. So generally speaking, they need to have um, an ATAR of around 90% or the equivalent um, going into postgraduate study, automatically assessed and it provides a 50% reduction in tuition for the whole course. Um, the university as a whole also has the Tasmanian International Scholarship, which offers 25% reduction in tuition for the course. And I'm sure that all of the agents and in-country staff are very familiar with that scholarship. We are still finalising our college scholarships for 2021 but we're hoping to have those finalised within the next week or two. And I'm sure that if you keep an eye out in your emails where you found out about this webinar, that information will be with you very soon. Thanks, Julie. Um, another few questions are very similar. Um, when we do have students back on campus, uh, what are the working opportunities like in Tasmania for our students? I'm happy to have a go at that one. Mm -hmm. It is a challenging time at the moment with COVID-19, but our focus is absolutely on employability for our students mm. at an undergraduate level and postgraduate level. We are trialling a number of programs to make our students more employable. And we also employ a number of our students um, within the university as project support officers within student life. Um, and we do try to connect them within the local industry. So we've heard from Clive um, speak about his experience being a CPA ambassador. Um, the various, many of the industry um, associations have summer employment programs for students as well. And we also recommend that students take up volunteering opportunities because students with um, volunteering experience will be better placed to secure more um, permanent work than someone who hasn't done um, any uh, practical experience with an employer. And volunteering um, opportunities often give a fantastic um, chance for someone to really practice and refine their, the skills that they're studying in the university. We're hoping things do get back to normal sooner rather than later. Mm. Uh, I do think it will be challenging for this year, um, but most students can find casual or part-time work if they look for it. I know my mm. own children, I have um, a son in grade 12 and my daughter um, finished Last year they were both able to find part-time and casual work while they were at school. Um, in things like France, in, in places like um, cafes or retail, if students' expectations are realistic, there is generally opportunities available. Mm, absolutely. Still got some questions coming through. So, uh, a little bit more time left in the webinar. I'll I'll get back to you one more question. I reckon we can fit probably one or two more in, but I'll just um, choose a few that are, are relevant to the the whole audience. So it might be a minute. Just while we're waiting for those final questions. Any of the more specific questions regarding very specific circumstances, um, please um, make sure we have your contact details because we will respond to those privately. 
Okay, so we've just got a bit of a follow-up uh, question. It was in regards to the CPA, and um, Belinda mentioned about the CPA exams. And um, are they uni exams or the real CPA exams? And do students that, need to take the CPA exams to pass their units? So that's the first part of it. Yes, so they are they are the CPA exams. They're not the university exams. So they um, and to pass the unit, they must pass the CPA exam. Yes. I think they were the two and, aspects that you covered. Yes, and and how many CPA exams are required for students who study this CPA special a CPA specialisation to graduate? Uh, to graduate, uh, Julie, are you able to help? My understanding is that uh, I think there are six of them. Six, um, okay. four in the specialisation, but another two that they must do earlier in the program. Mm. Can um, reconfirm that for the student. Yep. Yes. Yes, there there's six uh, subjects that you need to to do for CPA. Thank you. Excellent. Pardon. Thank you. So we have a lot of other questions, but a lot of them are relating to a broad range of entry requirements and admissions processes. So we will be answering those questions after the webinar. We will be responding to all our agents and students individually. Um, but yes, um, we've come to the end of our webinar. So Belinda and Julie if, and Clive, if you'd like to sign off and say thank you for everyone attending, that'd be great. Okay, well, well, thank you very much. Thank you for your attendance. Thank you for listening. And thank you for the questions that have been coming through. They're really informative. And, and if we have, uh, and as Julie mentioned, if there are more questions, please just keep sending them through and provide your contact details and we will ensure that we follow up with you. And we look forward to hopefully seeing you um, uh, when you commence your studies at the University of Tasmania. Uh, Julie and Clive, would you like to say any last? I would. I'd, li I'd like to say thank you very much um, for everyone's attention as well. It was a really um, large and great um, group of people. Um, I'd also like to mention I'm not from Tasmania originally. I'm from Sydney, so I've been in here, been down here for ten years with my family. It is the most fantastic place to live. The people are genuine. There are opportunities. The university is wonderful. The academics are accessible. I can hand on heart say that um, it's been the best decision for us. Um, please feel free to keep sending through your questions and we um, are happy to respond later. And again, thank you very much for your attention. And yes, thank you. I'll also extend my thanks to you all for your attention. And uh, hopefully if you see me one day as you join us within the school, just come and say hi. I saw you on the webinar. And thank you and stay safe. Thank you.